Hey guys, this is Ross. In today's video, we are going to do a comparison. And the comparison is very simply between my in-ground fig trees, trees that have one, been planted underneath these low tunnels, and have been underneath these low tunnels for about a month now. It has been a month since we constructed them. Um, and then also comparing those to trees that have not been on, under any sort of low tunnel that have just been out in the open with uh, the elements and have been growing in as much heat as I possibly could get them. Now these are trees, guys, that have been awake actually since the 1st of April. So even though today is May 15th and these low tunnels have been up since April 15th, uh, the trees across the board, most of them, uh, if they got themselves reasonably dug in the following season or have been in the ground for multiple seasons, they have waken up um, April 1st. Because we had such a mild winter, we had a very warm early spring, they started to swell their buds and actually put out leaves. And there is one example of a variety that I think is uh, further ahead than other varieties that have received no protection from these low tunnels, no additional heat source from these low tunnels. And I'll show you that tree because I think that one's probably the best comparison to what you see underneath here. And um, before I bring you guys underneath here and show you guys some pretty spectacular results and differences, and again, it's only been a month, um, I want to mention, because people have been asking me a lot, how warm is it under here? Well, so far, and I have a, a temperature sensor right here, humidity sensor. Uh, this guy is on the ground, and it's probably a bit warmer on the ground. But then again, if I put it up higher, heat rises. So, I don't know, it's a bit of a debate, but I would say that the temperatures difference between out here and underneath these low tunnels, assuming it's a sunny day for the entire day, is about 50 degrees, which is crazy. That's really warm. Um, so if it's a sunny day and it's only 40 degrees out, you could potentially reach 90 in here, uh, which is <laughs> pretty damn, pretty darn awesome. And this is exactly why I've been trying to tell you guys the benefits of these. Um, all that heat that we can give them is going to get them off to such an incredible start that's exponential. So when you see my trees right now that I'm going to show you guys in the back especially, these have been in the ground for two years. Um, some of these we just planted, some of these we actually transplanted. Um, some of these are just now waking up, believe it or not, even though how, how warm it's been under here. But uh, when I show you these, you really should pay attention to what they look like and how that's going to exponentially affect them um, in the next couple months. Uh, because these trees here, let's just say by the end of the year as an example, these trees are going to be massive and it's all because of this. They're not only going to be massive but this is going to enable them with all that excess heat to fruit very easily and very early and in fact some trees underneath these low tunnels are forming the very beginnings of fruit. And it's only been a month since they've been awake. Well, 45 days since they've been awake. But really, it's only been about a month since these trees have really done anything metabolically. Um, around April 15th, when we set these up, it was still quite cold. And it's been quite cold here in this climate. As you guys know, the Northeast has been very cold with a lot of frost that we've been having. So that you can make an argument that the comparison is sort of unfair because it's been so cold outside. However, it just really boosts my argument, doesn't it? That you should have these things. You should have these low tunnels in a climate like this. Because what if you do have a very cold spring like we've had? Um, today was 85 degrees and um, we're finally, it feels like summer today. It felt like summer. Um, finally, I think the, the weather is making up for it. <laughs> make, make it, make it this, making it up to us now. But the point is, is that if it's 50 degrees warmer in here, 
that's an issue. Um, so it's almost too warm in here. And what I have to do is just roll up the sides. I come out here every day, I roll them up. When the shade comes, as it is almost completely shaded in this bed now, I roll the sides back down. So I do that twice a day. It's really not all that difficult. It's just as simple as pushing this up and pushing this down. Um, on a windy day, it's a bit difficult to keep this in place uh, because sometimes this will actually just make its way down again. So if you tighten this paracord, that really helps with a slip knot. And this really keeps the plastic attached and not going anywhere. And then therefore, even if it is a windy day, you'll have the sides of this thing staying up and therefore you won't have temperatures over 100 in here. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do is keep temperatures about during the day below 100. In fact, I would like to keep them as low as I can. Um, but the real goal here is not necessarily the air temperatures, it's the soil temperatures. And I want the soil temperatures to be around 80 degrees. If they're at 80, I've succeeded. That is the optimal temperature for the, the growth and uh, metabolism of these trees. So that's what I'm trying to get at here before I show you anything is that we're gonna have to take these down soon. And um, I don't know exactly when that date is gonna be, but ideally at this point of the season, um, in about 15 days from now, it'll be June 1st. And at that point of the season, all of these trees in here next year, as an example, should reach the top of this low tunnel. That was my goal. That was my uh, vision with this, was that we put the low tunnels up March 1st and we uncover them. We take the tarps off like we do our greenhouse. So we uncover these. They're getting all that heat from March 1st onwards. A month later, you could argue they're gonna look somewhat like they do right now. Um, maybe 45 days later, they're gonna look like these. And then by the time it's June 1st and it's just too warm outside, they should already have been approaching, if not touching the tops, the three foot height of these low tunnels. And then I take them down, then we put them away, and then I bring them back out in the fall um, when these trees go dormant and I make my cuts. So the point is, is that even though they look as good as they do right now, they don't look nearly as good as they would. Um, assuming they were up March 1st, I had about 15 days, 45 days where these trees were not covered that I otherwise would have, which I think is uh, just another testament to how awesome this method is going to be. Um, so I guess enough talk now. Let me show you guys what the trees actually look like and you can see it for yourself. Um, I'm gonna just adjust the tripod here. So excuse the, uh, the camera for just a minute. I need to make this tripod a bit mobile. All right guys, that was pretty quick. So I'm gonna bring you guys underneath here because some of these trees are this is something we just planted, right? This is a rooted cutting here. This is Aishia Black. We rooted this winter, we planted it here. I have some trees here that I transplanted in that were dormant. They're just now leafing out. More cuttings, more transplants. Here's one that looks like it's gonna be dead, didn't make it through the winter time. Um, and then I have in the back, things like my Noardi Barbantane and my Italian 258. I'm gonna get you guys a better view of these because uh, it's a bit difficult to see them right now. But these are the trees as an example that I think are the best representation of what I'm trying to do, um, trying to accomplish and what these trees should look like in the future. And it's only been, as I said, 10 days um, there's a lot of shoot growth on these guys. Some of them have maybe five, six inches of growth. They're leafing out, they look very healthy. 
The same thing with the Italian 258 down there. Um, not as impressive as the other trees I'm about to show you, which is my, I hope I wasn't in the way there, guys. It's tough to uh, move around <laughs> in here. <laughs> but look at the Nero 600M and the Pastelier on the ends. You know, I'm gonna go around actually and I'm gonna lift up the sides for you. That probably makes more sense, doesn't it? There we go. So I can't really explain. I mean, I hope it's really coming out well with you guys. There's so many shoots, first off. There's probably too many shoots. Maybe I should thin this out, but I think I decided against it. But uh, these shoots, some of them are, you know, eight, nine inches in length. On a few of them, it does look like there's fruits that I could pinch these particular branches, some of these branches here, and I would get fruits. Uh, so I imagine what that means is that we're not only, we're a couple of weeks away from seeing fruit on a number of these trees. And it almost looks like they're trying to form the fruits. Um, and I was worried. I was very worried about, by cutting them back like this every year, that we were gonna have a issue with uh, hormonal imbalance. The Pastelier, by the way, it looks, I think, even better. Um, Cause this guy looks like it has the beginnings of fruit that's much further along. The branches are thicker, there's less branches here. So this tree did a nice job on its own of sort of thinning itself out in a way and not putting out too many branches. But um, yeah, I would expect in the next two weeks to see fruit on those two varieties there. And that to me is uh, incredible. If we see fruit by June 1st, that means that we are going to get fruit on those two varieties uh, at the time that you would normally expect our potted trees to fruit which is really quite something. It really is on an in-ground tree to be competitive. And I mean, here's the potted trees, guys. They've been out here and there's a couple standouts like this, my Calderwood Unknown. That's a very vigorous variety that I would say is pretty much on the par with the Pastelier, the Nero 600M. It's got the beginnings of fruits. It's got big leaves on it. Strong, healthy growth. Same thing with Smith. My Smith tree over here looks pretty similar with five or six leaves on it already. On these new shoots, this one has five. So we're pretty darn comparable, except here's the thing is that these are potted trees. And these potted trees are not gonna produce nearly as much fruit as those in-ground trees. It's not even gonna be close. All right, let me show you guys now some more trees that are underneath low tunnels. And then I wanna show you guys a tree that, uh, well, I guess we can show you guys a tree right now. This is the tree I wanted to show you because some of these, like you can see down here, this is my Ron de Bordeaux. Not protected. It's in a very, very warm place. So you can see that there's no low tunnel, but the fact that there's rocks, it's in such a warm spot, there's a good amount of growth on this. It's doing really well. And uh, it just goes to show you that you can still do this without the low tunnels, okay? The methods that I've set up in the past, when I'm talking about putting them in warm places and putting these rocks down, these trees are, are nothing to, to laugh about. Here's another one here. This is Texas BA1, which is pretty darn similar to Smith. And it actually is doing so, so well. 
Um, but a lot of the shoot growth is just starting and it's uh, just starting to take off. It really is only about an inch in, in length. There's maybe three leaves now on some of these shoots if you count the new leaf versus the other ones were much more vigorous, much more further along. And you know, as it stands right now, I don't exactly know when these guys are gonna fruit. We're still, that's not even really a thought just yet. And this is in really the warmer spots of the yard, the warmest spots I have, right up against the house in a bed of rocks. I mean, the west side of the house, it doesn't get warmer than this right now. Um, I'm sweating just sitting here. Little Ruby, same thing, sort of in a raised bed. Really uh, not that far along compared to those other trees we just looked at. And let me show you more because it's not just those. They're there's a holier in here, LSU Huye, that's got a ton of growth on it. I don't know if you guys really can see that. Now here's what I mean by the, the tunnel kind of falling on a windy day, is that this is the windy side of the house. And uh, the wind kind of makes this thing fall. And just, just being in here would make you want to cringe. I mean, that's how warm it is. Um, hey, so I mean, let me just show you guys these trees right here. This is a really good example of a tree that got off to a wonderful start to the season. This is my white Marseille from Edible Landscaping that actually is the furthest along in terms of fruits so far. Um, this is a two-year-old tree been in the ground now for a year, so this is its second year. And uh, it's been through a lot. But it actually, if I look at these nodes in here, it does look like it's the closest one to fruiting. Very thick, healthy leaves, um, I can't complain. And it's sort of across the board underneath there, behind it, is an LSU tiger. See that one in the, in the background? That one has another eight, nine inches of growth on particular branches. Again, very close. I looked at it yesterday. Very close to having fruits on it. So I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I am particularly overwhelmed. I'm not entirely surprised. I guess this would be the time of the year that this kind of thing would be happening, but can you only imagine what would have happened if I put these low tunnels up well, March 1st, when I said that I was going to in a normal year. So uh, I'm, like I said, I'm very pleased, very happy. I thought because we were getting the plastic so late in the season that I wasn't gonna get much benefit out of the plastic, but it's immense, it is. Um, you know, all the fig knowledge and experience I have, uh, I can't really put into words how beneficial this is and has been. It's really, really something. Um, now, I guess the last question is to figure out when to take these things down. Um, I don't know just yet, but I still have some trees, believe it or not, that haven't even woken up in these low tunnels. They're still very young, need to get adjusted and dug, dig themselves in a bit. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what the benefits are, what the negatives are, and we'll make a decision. Um, but every year that goes by, a lot of these trees are gonna get more and more um, dug in and more mature. And I think it's gonna be something real special for somebody who lives in this climate. I've been saying this, uh, it's hard to beat. So thank you guys here for watching this one. Uh, if they put on fruit by, let's see, June 1st, I mean, you have all of June, all of July. Yeah, and I guess that would put them in August. Um, fruiting sometime in August. So anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this one, subscribe. Check out our blog, figboss.com. I want to thank everybody out here for watching this one. We'll see everybody soon, all right? Take care and uh, check out our Facebook and Instagram. Stay safe out there, guys.